hey, it's Joe Glines and uh, Isaiah is from the Automator. And we were, uh, someone wrote us, they were asking about detecting double clicking and triple clicking or whatever of a specific key. Now, in the example here, we're going to walk through using a mouse click, but theoretically it would work for almost anything, right? Um, that sense yes. Of, however, um, you would probably be sending, if you did like on the letter A, it would be sending the letter A as you're doing it, right? Um, so you'd have to plan around that. But um, all right, why don't you go ahead and share your screen here? Yeah, Start. sure. Um, one thing though, whenever you, um, depending on how you set up the, the hotkey, you might not have that issue of sending the key because if you if you put an A like this, the A is going to be blocked, right? So that is not going to be sent to the OS unless you use the tilde, in which case, yeah, every time you click, so it's going to do that. But in our case, yeah, but um, you lose the A entirely, so I don't think yeah, you, you lose it, right? Depending, no. dep right. you could actually send it manually if you want, but yeah. Um, so for example, if I block it and then send A, for example, I could do that. Who manually send it. send it? Gotcha. Right, right, exactly. I could do that if I wanted, but right. in any case, the main idea is how do I capture how many times a specific key was pressed? And and we were talking a little bit about this. And there's this uh, variable that we could use a time since prior hotkey. And this is something that <laughs> I have been coding for a long time and I didn't have that variable before. So the way how we did it, it was kind of like more hacky. Yeah. <laughs> it was very manual, but with this hotkey, everything gets very easy. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that. Um, first of all, we want we want to capture, capture the, the left mouse button. And again, I do want to pass that onto the OS. So I'm gonna use the tilde here. Um, now, what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to check if a time since prior hotkey is not minus one. The thing here is that um, if there is no prior hotkey, this is going to be set as minus one. That's the thing. And I don't care about that. So I want to make sure that it is not that. And the, the time since the prior hotkey, I have to make sure that it is less than a specific amount of milliseconds. So uh, I want it to be quick. If you press it too slow, I don't want to count on that. I just want to make sure that it is kind of like a double click very quick. That would be 200 milliseconds. I, I think that's a good um, um Timer there. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to start counting. Count plus equals one, which this does is that just grabs that variable and kind of like increments it every time you click so I could keep count of it. And then if you take too long, so if you take more than 400 milliseconds to click, I want to kind of like, um, let me reset the counter to zero. So I, I, if you take too long to press again, I, I'm not counting that as a double click or something. I just want to do that. Now, now that I have that, let's go ahead and catch them, right? Now, the, here is a little thing that is a little bit uh, not intuitive, but to catch a double click, you would want to grab count as two, well, so as one. And this is the funny thing, because when you press the L button the first time, there is no prior hotkey. So this is going to be jumped. So that was not counted. But when you press it the second time, there is a prior hotkey, and it is less than 200 milliseconds. So this, this gets counted the first time. So the first time this variable is counted, Actually, you clicked two times. So let's go ahead and say um, um, tooltip double click. And let's go ahead and test it. I run it. One click makes nothing. One click, one click. But double click should give me um, a, uh, a small uh, tooltip that tells me hey, uh, you just double-clicked. 
So we are catching the double click, especially in, um, I just closed it, I just closed the script. So especially when I um, do it within the time frame that I, I allowed myself, right? Now, what if I want to catch a third <laughs> click? Then that's, my, that's just a matter of counting if it is two times now. So the two times in this situation would, would count as this variable being two times uh, counted, which would be a third time of a click. And now double click would give me something. And let me just one second. Is it running? Come on, let's see. So run. I think the last time we decided yeah, double click is that, triple click is that. Double click, triple click. So you can see when I double click, only the word is selected. If I triple click, the whole line is selected, right? Yeah, and you can see <clears throat> you can see the 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 tooltip actually match whatever I'm doing. And in between, before the triple click, <clears throat> I get a double click. So if I double click, it is very fast, but when I triple click, you will see the double click first and then the triple click. And that is something that if you pause the video and try to you know, put it in slower time, you will be able to see it, that the double click was called before the, tri the, the triple click. So we could do some things to go around that. So we could actually try and check for the triple click before the double click. But again, um, what, what's gonna happen is the double click is gonna be called anyways, because Still, right. the double click, right? The double click, but then um, you see, those are the type of things that make you a programmer. Now, how do you fix that little issue, right? So no, the logic is okay. Now, how do I fix that issue? Because say for example, that you want to do one action if you have, a, say for example, run notepad, but um, with a triple click, you want to run CMD. What is gonna happen is that if you double click, you're gonna open notepad, right? But if you triple click, it's gonna open Notepad and CMD, right? So that those are the type of things that you will want to solve. And the way how we could do it is only run it if a specific time has passed. So if double click, then um, and then if well, I would. That's kind of like that's the type of things that you would think. I would wait a little longer before I run the Notepad. Thing. Just to see if I get a if I get a triple click, you I have would to just wait longer than the two hundred milliseconds. Yes, so I would have to wait a little bit longer for the next key. No, well, but less than four hundred milliseconds. Right. So I would wait one hundred milliseconds because it is between two hundred and four hundred. I would make one hundred in between um, to wait to check whether you clicked um, the 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 other thing. So. I would probably set up a variable var equals double click, right? I would set up the variable, then wait a little longer, like sleep 100. And if it was not, if the variable here at the top, if it is a triple click, I would set the variable to blank, to blank it. So if you hit a, a triple click, it would blank the variable. And then down here, the, the, the thing is not going to get executed. There are ways to go around it, but that's the type of things that you would have to think about. But yes, you can catch a double click. You can catch a triple click. You can catch how many clicks you want. You can actually make it for as many as you want. Now, if you have actions in between, you would have to solve for that action not happening before the other one. Okay. So correct me if I'm wrong here. What you're saying is lines 8 through 13 is really more logic that we're just setting up and then we take our action after all of that. Yes. And say, okay. Yes. So yeah. I would actually wait for the clicking things and just set specific variables that tell me where am I. I get it. And then later on in the action, I'm just going to say like, okay, if the variable has this thing, then I'm going to do that thing. So yeah. it, it is kind of like um, a way for me to not 
execute the action as soon as you click because then you're going to have like a lot of things at the same time, right? Right. So eight through 13, basically we could turn into a ternary, right? Because it's it's just simple logic and and applying. In this case, yes. So count equals one. So you can actually just say this, count equals one, bar. We could do this, so four. So let's go ahead and grab this guy, put it outside. Counts equal one, or in this case, I would say another ternary count equals two. Then you're gonna bring uh, Count equals two, then you're gonna bring triple click or nothing. Or so that's it. Now that would be a, a, a ternary that you could do. Um, the problem with ternaries is that they get confusing very quickly. Sure. That's the reason why I always put the blank there. Even it is blank, but I know that it's a ternary and this is the if, and this is the else. And this is the if, and this is the else. If you don't put the blank ones, you might get confused when you're looking at this. What, what I do is uh, put, it, put that back in there and now break it across lines, starting yes. each one at the beginning. So I write mine across each line and then I roll them up and flatten them out once I get it the way that makes sense to me. I'm like, okay, now right. I see what's going on. All right. And I can understand it. And then I can collapse it down. And, and another, seeing. yeah. Another thing that I usually do, and I don't collapse them. If I have a ternary, I usually do not collapse them. Mm -hmm. um, but I have the question mark, which is my question, my first action. And then I line up my colon below the question mark uh -huh. and I put whatever happens there. And that way now, as I have a second one, when right. I line this no. up, right. what is going to happen is that now I know that this thing belongs to that one on the top. So I oh, do that. Okay, I don't usually time. do that. All right. No, but that's I that's a it. way to kind of like see I that they're together. cascading, yeah. right? Yeah. They're cascading. Right. Um, and automatically by doing that line up there, I know that this belongs to that one automatically by just looking at it. And my my, and I will not get confused by my um, parentheses either, because each these parentheses here might end up just below the one that I care about. So you see this thing ends up at the top and this one below. Each parenthesis kind of like tells me where I'm at, at right now. Some people get confused by it, but I have my method and I know what, what like I know where they fall into. Right. And, and then on like 12 or somewhere in there, that's where we would say, now let's look at var what the variable was and let's perform an action on it so if it was one or so if it was double click right then do this Something. if yep. it was triple click do that you could do that right. now again that still gives you the issue that the first time you double click the var is going to contain double click and your logic is going to do something so for example if i say if but var equals double click i'm going to tell you what the solution is Okay. So right now, again, as you double click, it is going to set it to double click. And now your logic is going to run. It's going to run Notepad. And when you hit the triple click, now this variable is going to say triple click. And now it's going to run CMD. So it's going to run both of them at the same time. Okay. What I would do is just grab this code and I would set a timer. My, so I would set a timer to run uh, or execute program. And I would make it I would, minus 100, I think it is, to set it to run once. And now my timer execute program is going to do, hold on, just. Now, 
Now, as I'm setting this timer for 100 milliseconds, um, I'm gonna actually kind of like waste the time in here. So for the, uh, how do I say, I just try to take a little time, take a pause before I do my actions so that we could verify. And actually I, I would set it up for the next 400 milliseconds. So I would just wait until this thing runs out. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of this, what is going to happen is that it is going to have the final version of my variable. Okay, so because now that it finished, it will either stay in double click or stay in triple click. And after I do this, then I just empty my variable so that it could be checked again before. So again, what I'm doing here is separating the clicks that I'm doing, right? right? From the action, yeah. From the action. And that allows me to first figure out what happened and then go ahead and um, take, action. take yeah. an action. That gives me time because if you triple click, the, the, this thing is going to be set. But then at the end, the variable, after 400 milliseconds, the variable will contain triple click if you click three times. The variable is going to end up with triple click. I think I understand how that's working. You're right. Saying wait, wait before I do anything up to right, right. Time. So, so yeah. I and and I and I just set it up to be after the four hundred milliseconds. That is my time limit. So mm -hmm. after four hundred right. milliseconds, I restart everything. So right. I know that after four hundred milliseconds, I just can I just check whatever I was going to check. It is going to be either one click, two clicks, or three three clicks. It's going to be one of them. Yeah, it's not going to be both, right? So. Um, yeah, that's the idea behind it. And this set timer is executed only once because I set it in negative. If I set it as 400, it's going to be executed every for uh, every 400 milliseconds. That's not what I want. I want it only to be executed once and then that's it. So with this, I think that fixes the issue until we start, you know, like tracking on it. <laughs> if I run it, double click should run notepad, right? Triple click, CMD. And no notepad. Excellent. And no notepad. You see what I mean? So basically the logic is there. Um, and that is because I'm dividing one thing and then performing the action after I really finished checking the variable. And just to hammer home a point, change the left button to something else, right? right. Like that's the beautiful thing about this, right? Is you can make the left button, change it from a left button to the letter A. Right. right. Exactly. So now I run my script and if I click and you can see that I'm triple clicking in here or double clicking, nothing happens. But if I type the A two times, it should actually, right. and you see it that it, it yeah, just typed, it's, right? It's so right. now if I do it three times, it should open the cool. other thing. You see? Yeah. So basically you can change that to whatever you want. And if you have right. a mouse that have different buttons, you can actually right. that's, that's assign it to a different button or right. a controller or whatever you want in general. Yeah, and the great thing about this too is now with it written this way, it's very clear how to add a quadruple click, right? Yes. Or a quintuple yes. click, right? It's, it's extendable very easily. It is easily extendable. I would really recommend against using ternaries when you're doing this because they're harder to read. Um, the ternaries are very useful if you have only one else if, okay? So if you have, it is either this or that. In that case, a ternary makes a lot of sense. Just like this. If it is count one, double click or triple click. Right in this particular example, that doesn't work. Okay, but I would really suggest you if you're going to use ternaries, just use them when you have an if else statement like this. Now, if you're going to be checking for multiple values, I really encourage you to use if one uh, um, var equals double click, then if count equals two bar 
equals triple click. That way, it is way more readable. Of course, it the the and again, look, those are four lines, and the ternary that we had, it was three lines. The only difference is one line of code, but this one is more readable. And now anybody can come and say, like, okay. That's it. So it is very easy to extend. When you have a ternary, it is not going to be that simple because people would have to first read what happened there. Where, what is it checked, right? If you have multiple checks and a lot of if else statements, this is the way to go. If it is just one thing that can be either or, a ternary makes sense. Well, the, the only caveat I would say to that, <clears throat> which I'm not going to disagree with you because Clearly, that's super easy to read, and it's it's very fast, right? So it, I mean, yeah. it, it's going to be very fast. But if you're developing code that is just for you, and you are, you know, very very familiar with ternaries, then they're fine. But yeah, if of you course. ever think someone else is going to be looking at your code, right, like or borrowing it or whatever, you're spot on, right? Which is more often than not the case, right? We I, we, I uh, would argue on that one, and uh, this is the the one thing. You know how it is after three, six months, you don't remember anything about your code. So then, then you're going to have the little issue of, oh, oh, what the heck was I doing here? You know, that, that's, that's the, my argument against that. But yeah, of course, ternaries, of course, are not bad thing. They're good. And, and, and you can use them as much as you like. The only thing is that I would recommend against them if you have more than one check. That's all. If you only have one check, it's either this or that. Right, it's pretty. Uh, they're perfectly fine. Now, as soon as you start nesting them, yeah. they get ugly very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you see, in this case, this little um, variable allows you to do very interesting stuff whenever you're doing uh, this type of thing, um, you know, to count how many times you press something. This would be the way to go. Cool. Awesome, man. Thank you. That was very interesting. <laughs> you're welcome. Cheers.